Well, I have a great affinity with cornerbacks. Uh, great respect for the job they do, the tankless job that they often do. But whatever about playing cornerback in hurling, you probably get to express yourself a bit more than playing cornerback in football. Uh, not the most glamorous position in the world, but they're worth their weight in goal, aren't they? Lads that are able to be effective cornerbacks and shut down really good forwards. Oh, if you have a good cornerback, I think you're... And you can leave them isolated on a brilliant forward. That gives you a license to do an awful lot more with your team up the field. Because if you're constantly thinking of, geez, we need to keep that door shut behind us, you, you're probably going to play with a little bit of fear in the sense that a sweeper is always going to have to be back and maybe back more than, you know, these sweepers that tend to transition up and down the field. And I know he's my own club man, but Michael Fitzsimons, I think, is arguably the best cornerback in the game at the moment. And we're going to try and decide our best cornerback. So maybe there's a little bit of bias there. But it's just his development over the years. He would have started out as um, playing on the Dublin junior team, got his way into the, into the All-Ireland final in, in 2011, won his, won his All-Ireland, out of the team, back in. And I think he's become so crucial at this point. And we saw what happened last year with David Clifford and uh, the rough time that he gave to Johnny Cooper. And it was Michael Fitzsimons who went on him then. And I think Fitzsimons, in the heel of the hunt, he did unbelievably well. And I, I just don't think too many other cornerbacks are going to be able to, to do that. I know Stephen McManaman had done all right for Donegal in the Super 8 game. But I think what... I mean, that's the ultimate test really at the moment, isn't it, David Clifford? And I think Michael Fitzsimons, Davy Byrne, another excellent cornerback there with Dublin. But uh, Fitzsimons has been very impressive how he has reinvented himself or maybe more so kind of brought his level up because the competition is so fierce there. Um, he mightn't have been backed a few years ago to keep his, his position. No, he definitely wouldn't have been. He was obviously man in the match in the replay uh, in 2016 and has basically held on to his position there ever since. And he's gone kind of from strength to strength. And he's not maybe what you'd think of as your stereotypical cornerback. He's quite big and rangy. He's lean, but he's big. He's big, tall fella. Like, and it's I suppose it's quite handy in that sense that he can slip in either cornerback or fullback and if he goes in fullback there's not going to be you know a mismatch even if he's marking a guy that's 6'3 or 6'4 because he is quite a big rangy player but even going through like the best cornerbacks like they're not hard they're they're not easy find you know really really good cornerbacks like you look at it, what was what was Kerry's one of Kerry's biggest problems over the last couple of years they had a lot of really good defenders uh, maybe maybe defender is not the right word. Did a lot of really good backs, and but guys maybe that war that didn't want to defend enough or weren't capable of defending enough, and that's why when Tom O'Sullivan came in last year, um, and he was brilliant in in the draw on, the draw on Ireland final in particular last year, he just offered so much real tight tenacious kind of a player does all the simple things right, doesn't try to do anything flashy, and invariably can keep his man fairly quiet. And if you have one or two of them now, the standard of attacking, particularly at the upper echelons, when you're looking at uh, when you're looking at Conor Callan and Dean Rock and these lads, and you're looking at the carry forward, full forward line of you know Ganey, maybe maybe James O'Donoghue and David Clifford, you need guys that are going to be able to shut them out. So I think Thomas Sullivan is definitely high in the conversation there as well. He'd be quite a different type of cornerback than Michael Fitzsimons, though, because. Maybe Tom Sullivan would, be, Sullivan would be more in line with the likes of, um, oh, what's the, what's the, uh, the small, own merchant. Yeah, because you know the way he would often mark the guy who's going to travel as a, as, as a guy who starts as an inside forward, we'll say, but travels out around the field. I think own merchant is more likely to, to mark them. Then you'd have someone like Keith Higgins, who has the potential to carry the ball forward, but would often stay back and man mark somebody. Uh, Chris Barrett, of course, he'd be he, almost a fullback in a way because he's a combative guy. Uh, Brendan Harrison, another guy who arguably says he's a fullback. Owen Bon Gallagher then, sort of a Rolls Royce, and it's nearly a shame to keep him too far back. And you know, you could have him in the conversation for a wing back as well. So there are different types of cornerbacks. Without a doubt, like if you look at Mick Fitzsimons isn't going to be like flying forward. But then if you look at it on the other side, Davy Byrne has no problem flying forward. And of course, got that drawn score against Monaghan uh, in that league game this year where they came from, I think, 10 down to get that score. Owen Bon Gallagher, very good defender. Brilliant at the other end as well. Same with Brendan Harrison, same with Keith Higgins. Have that potential to go forward. I think they're in polar opposites to a Tom Tom O'Sullivan or maybe a Mick Fitzsimons, or even an Owen Cairn from Galway. They're they're out-and-out out defenders, whereas the other lads are 
they don't want to have their creativity stifled by playing in defence. They can also have the capability going forward. But when you have someone like, let's say, Owen Bond, who's really dynamic, uh, like he's capable of getting up and down the field and being effective at both ends. So it just goes to show you, you probably can't have two man-marking cornerbacks. You probably need a man-marker who's going to man-mark and another guy who can maybe float a bit more or has the potential to go forward. It's kind of like we talked about the half-forward position as well uh, in Hurling, where you need, you know, maybe one guy who's going to do an absolute barrel of work for you and then another guy who can do the bit of work, yeah, but can also be really, really effective on the scoreboard. So it's funny to say, I, I would think that cornerbacks are nearly like that as well. With the way scores are gone now in Gaelic, you need to have a lad that can come up and get a score. Like Owen Merchant fleets between wing back and cornerback, but he was the one, of course, that came up and got the, the tap down at the start of the the replay at All-Ireland final and got that all-important goal as well. So you need to have lads that are capable of doing that as well as the defensive duties. You can't be shy either as a cornerback. I don't think Michael McKernan would be considered a shy when he plays cornerback. Voodoo Seah wouldn't be with Westmead. Ryan Wiley, uh, Connor Boyle even. I mean, and I think that's across the board. That, that you do need to be an aggressive player like Owen Curran you mentioned as well I'd say take the head off yeah, if you if you got half the chance and I say that in a sort of complimentary type way that um, is that is the greatest compliment you could play it's like a couple of years ago when Tomas O'Shea uh, kind of said he didn't it's not the word he meant but he said Dublin he was basically waxing lyrical about Dublin and people took it the wrong way when he said they have a couple of scumbags and he meant that in the best way possible it's not uh, that's it might it mightn't have been the best choice of words but to have that you need that type of player and invariably it's a, you need a miserable a miserable old corner back who will do anything to keep one of the opposition forwards at bay and there's no problem not touching the ball or not okay. getting his hands on the ball and no problem not contributing going forward and that's kind of and there's a mix there between that type of corner back the Owen Kern the Mick Fitzsimons and then a Davy Byrne or an Owen Bon Galler like some players wake up dreaming of playing football, doing something glorious, a lovely pass. Like these cornerbacks, they wake up dreaming of football being disrupted. It's a, it's a bit of a warped mindset as far as I'm concerned. Well, it, it, it is, and, but only, only for them. Like they're the guys... They're the guys that do the unglamorous work on the team. Like, and without them, the other, the other, the, the wing backs can't go bombing forward. They have, they have to be minding the house the whole time. So while you need your ball players, you also need lads like that. And I think it's a dying art. I think it's a dying art. We talked about um, the cornerback debate in hurling. Like, there are very few really, really high end cornerbacks because it's not. It's not a glamorous position. It's not something like everybody dreams of scoring the winning goal in an Ireland final. Nobody dreams of, you know, spoiling a lad for the winning goal. Do you know what I mean? So it's not, it's not a simple job to, to sell to lads. Is it like this? That a lot of corner forwards, sorry, corner backs, they would have the athleticism of maybe a wing forward or a corner forward, but maybe not the finishing ability. So to be a brilliant corner back, you almost have to be one of these lightning forwards that can't actually shoot. So the only place for you is corner back. <laughs> yeah, that there's probably there's probably a fair degree of truth to that. I think nowadays with the best of the best cornerbacks, they also have they're also becoming more ball players. You can't you, like it's like it's like this. Um, if we were playing, you know, if we were playing a team and you wanted to leave somebody free, you'd be maybe trying to leave Owen Karen free or maybe trying to leave Thomas Sullivan free see because maybe you think they won't be able to do as much damage on the ball but those lads have gotten so much better the standard of you know football within those cornerbacks has gotten way better they're able to defend but they're also able to add uh, going forward when they have to you have to be able to kick pass off both feet you have to be able to get forward you have to be able to create the overlap if that's the position you're in you have to be able to take a score if that's the position you're in the more than we saw Davy Byrne or Owen Bon Gallagher or these boys bombing forward you kind of have to be able to do that when you're put in that position as well yeah and Marco O'Shea arguably started all that because you know glorious carrier of the ball able to get a score Philly McMahon possibly took that to another level again outscored a couple of very high profile players in the latter stages of the championship in a couple of sort of mano v mano duels like so good at actually just turning a player the other direction altogether i think aiden o'shea and colin gooch cooper had a couple of rough days on him so there's there's obviously a number of cornerbacks that we haven't mentioned and please comment in if you think there's anyone in particular who should have been into the conversation but let's narrow it down who is your favorite cornerback um 
I, I appreciate while I appreciate the lad going forward that's able to get forward, I'd also have the probably maximum appreciation for the spoiler and the lad that's going to be able to stop the other the opposition's best forward. And Dublin would not have won five in a row last year if it wasn't for what Mick Fitzsimons was able to do on Clifford once uh once Johnny Cooper was sent off and even in the replay match as well. Like David Clifford and these top forwards are gonna have their moments. But it's just minimising those moments. They're going to have them, no matter who they're on, they're going to have them. It's just making sure that when push comes to shove and the game's in the mental pot in the second half, you're making it really, really tough for them. And I remember David Clifford being turned back a couple of times uh, in the second half of the, the draw on Ireland final and even in the second half of the replay on Ireland final. And I thought Mick Fitzsimons was brilliant. It's, it's one of these funny things where Clifford could be an eight, but Mick Fitzsimons could also be an eight because they've both... They've both done brilliant things in, sp- in spite of the other lads' brilliance. So I probably have Mick Fitzsimons as car- the top cornerback at the moment. Probably closely followed by, if Owen Bong Gallagher were to stay fit, he'd be very, very close by. And I think Thomas Sullivan would be very, very close by too. Mm. And I think Davey Byrne, even though he's probably not as spectacular as some of the others, I think he's right up there too. I would go with Mike Fitzsimons. I think people will possibly accuse me of a small bit of bias. But like he's been so good, like you said, since that All-Ireland final replay when he came in a few years ago and was uh, man of the match. I think he'd have to be up there as number one. 